Well, let's move on the, to the next uh, presentation uh, by uh, Dr. Han Popilski, uh, Popilski, sorry, yes. and from uh, yeah, Ben Gurion University of Israel. Okay, he, she has the same uh, title. Hello, thank you for the opportunity to speak here. I will talk to you about uh, penetration enhancers for treatment of uh, solid tumors. So, in order for an anti-cancer drug to be effective, it must successfully reach the tumor, distribute, and in some cases, enter the tumor cells. As you can see, the solid tumor has a complex morphology. Sorry. Cancer cells are embedded within the dense stroma, which contains different kinds of cells. We can see immune system cells like lymphocytes and microphages, and uh, extracellular matrix. As we move towards the core of the tumor, further from the blood vessels, the cells are exposed to hypoxia, increased acidity, and higher interstitial fluid pressure. The drug distribution in the tumor is heterogeneous, and following systemic administration, only areas in proximity to the blood vessels are exposed to therapeutic concentrations. Over the years, drug delivery systems have been developed to target the chemotherapeutic drug towards the tumor. Unfortunately, the targeting efficiency remains very low, uh, the accumulation of the drug in the tumor is low and the intratumoral disposition and distribution are inefficient. The result is limited clinical effectiveness and limited safety profile. Okay. Intratumoral administration can be used to deliver the drug directly to the intended site of action, the solid tumor and uh, limit the toxicity to other tissues. Here we have two examples of intratumoral anti-cancer implants. The first one is Gliadel for treatment of uh, brain cancer. It is administered directly to the site of the tumor during surgery. And the second example right here is an implantable, uh, injectable polymeric implant that is composed of polysebaceic and uh, resinoleic ester that gradually re releases the drug inside the tumor. You see here the control groups that don't contain the chemotherapeutic drugs, and here are the treatment groups where the drug is released inside the tumor. The objective of our study was to investigate the effect of penetration enhancers and promoter drugs on the efficiency of paclitaxel loaded into a tumoral injectable drug delivery systems. Our implantable formulation was composed of the biodegradable pasty polymer I mentioned earlier and paclitaxel as a chemotherapeutic agent. Initially, we tested several suspected penetration enhancers and promoter drugs. Losartan that uh, reduces the stromal collagen, nicotinamide that lowers the arterial blood pressure and interstitial fluid pressure, collagenase that lowers the microvascular pressure and interstitial <laughs> fluid pressure, azon and oleic acid, which are commonly used topical penetration enhancers, and dexamethasone. Usually, dexamethasone is uh, administered in the treatment of solid tumors uh, to alleviate the symptoms caused by chemotherapy, such as emesis and nausea. But uh, recently, some papers shown that pretreatment with dexamethasone can increase the accumulation and effect of several anti-cancer agents. We used a tetrophic breast cancer model uh, based on the injection of 41 luciferase expressing cancer cells to bulb C female mice. When the tumors reached the volume of approximately 50 cubic millimeters, we injected the treatments intratumorally. Uh, okay. 
We performed in vivo imaging at several different time points to visualize the gradient of the luciferase activity around the implant. And 20 day, 28 days after inoculation of the tumor, we sacrificed the animals, harvested the tumors and other internal organs for further analysis. Uh, now I will present, present to you the results of our latest experiment uh, regarding dexamethasone, which was the most promising <laughs> one. So decreased body weight was uh, observed in the groups receiving the implants with the dexamethasone. The body weight was used as the, was used to assess the general condition of the mice and it seems like there is some level of systemic ex exposure to dexamethasone. The Paclit Excel dexamethasone containing formulation showed significant delay in the tumor growth. This is the green line here. Uh, it also demonstrated slightly lower tumor mass here. So uh, here for each group we can see the same animal imaged using the in vivo imaging system at three different time points. 14 days post tumor inoculation, which was the same day we administered the treatment, seven days post treatment administration, and 14 days. Uh, we, we injected the mice uh, with uh, luciferin, which is the substrate for the luciferase enzyme expressed only by the cancer cells. The luminescent reaction can only occur in live cancer cells that express the enzyme, and therefore the signal is proportional, propor proportional to the amount of live cells inside the main tumor and the metastasis. So we can see uh, in all of the groups, this is the approximate location of the implant. It shows lower signal. And as we go further from the implant, the signal uh, increases until we reach the margin. The group receiving dexamethasone only without Paclit Excel had the higher signal, which means the higher amount of live cancer cells. And the group uh, receiving the dexamethasone and Paclit Excel at the end of the experiment had the lowest signal. And it's also the only group that demonstrated decrease in the signal over time, which means uh, that the cancer cells, they're dying. We looked at the lungs to determine where there was, there was some kind of uh, difference in the formation of metastasis. So we also, we image the lungs ex vivo using the IV system. Those are the metastases. And we also one second, treated the lungs with a bowing solution, which changes the color of the lung to a bit yellowish color. And then we can see the metastases just with the eyes. So there was no significant difference in lung metastases formation or the lung mass between the groups. In conclusion, the incorporation of dexamethasone into the studied formulation increased the anti-tumor activity of Paclit Excel, but unfortunately we were not able to achieve complete eradication of the tumor. Uh, the possible mechanism for this effect is the anti-inflammatory effect that occurs locally inside the tumor, dexamethasone decreases the, the amount of the pro-inflammatory cytokines and changes the local microenvironment inside the tumor. I would, I would like to thank my supervisor, Dr. David Stepanski, the members of our lab, our collaboration, collaborators, Professor uh, Avram Dom's lab, which did a lot of work on the polymeric implant, 
Professor Svendman and the BSF for founding. Thank you. So, any questions? Yeah, please. Um, thank you. Um, Dexamethasone zones are, are very often used um, in combination with chemotherapy, also for with paclitaxel, with uh, docetaxel, and I mean these these are also micelle formations which you're giving um, f often for many weeks uh, in combination. Um, are you arguing because also from your title that because you have a, a nanoparticle, it's not just an effect of of the dexamethasone, which is anti-inflammatory or something, but you you actually enhancing penetration. I didn't really see that data. Most of the papers I've seen, uh, they talk about pre-treatment with dexamethasone and systemic treatment. What we did uh, differently, we administered both of them together locally inside uh, the implant. So the systemic exposure, sh exposure should be minimal and uh, we still see the effect. Okay, uh, let me uh, ask you a question. And you just to imply that uh, you have used uh, uh, intratumoral polymer uh, with varying concentration of paclitaxel and also 10% of dexamethasone. Dexamethasone is loaded in the polymer or is, is it just uh, co-injected? It's loaded in the polymer together with the paclitaxel. Okay, so then the release from the polymer would be the same as paclitaxel. So that's your kind of assumption? It's, it's gradual release, yeah. I don't have yeah. the in vitro data here. And actually, uh, your uh, abstract, the lengthy abstract here, uh, yes, was a little bit different, different than I could not understand. So I have so many questions, but you change it, the table, I mean the conditions. And 5% to 20% of paclitaxel and 10% uh, dexamethasone only. And the tumor, as, as far as t tumor volume is concerned, 10% dexamethasone was the uh, largest, right? But here... We had, yeah. in, the, in the polymeric formulation, we have 5% of paclitaxel. We yeah. had another formulation of 20%. Yes. And the combined formulation was 5% 5 uh, paclitaxel, 10% dexamethasone. And you have also used the polymer loaded only with the dexamethasone, yes, 10%. Yes, as a control group. And as a control group. And, and here, the control group? Here, uh, this, in the this figure was, uh, yeah, it's a okay. Experiment, just, uh, we wanted All right, to yeah, use so the latest results. We also had uh, those response uh, experiment okay. or with different concentrations of dexamethasone, lower concentrations, mm -hmm. but they were yeah. not as effective. Surely. So I don't have okay. It Is there any other question? Yeah, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you.